So this is now lecture nine. We're going to be talking about avascular tubers and I hope getting into chemotaxis. And because a lot of people were not able to do all of the exercises last week, we're going to do a little bit of repetition of uh, some of the exercises uh, to make sure that everyone is able to get them to work. As always, I need to remind you that classes are live streamed on YouTube and available for subsequent viewing. I hope that's useful for people. I know it takes some time to get them edited sometimes, but uh, I hope that the, the material is useful. So I'd like again to just check in quickly with people on projects. Uh, we'll review some ideas about diffusion that we talked about uh, last time. And then we'll come back to the avascular tuber spheroid uh, we'll go through those exercises. I hope the first few are going to be pretty quick. Um, then we'll talk about diffusion-limited growth, which is becoming more interesting, uh, and the avascular tuber, um, and uh, see how far we could get to that. And then depending on the amount of time, I'd like to start talking about chemotaxis, uh, how chemotaxis works in CompuCell, uh, and then do some simple examples of chemotaxis. Um, I don't think we'll probably get through all of that today, uh, but at least it gives you a sense of where we're headed uh, with the with this material. So if people want to do quick updates on projects, um, maybe start with Pedro and Emma. Do you have anything you want to update us on about your thinking about uh, projects? Go ahead. Um, we're we're going to replicate um, the paper that you mentioned. Sorry, I missed the meeting. I actually completely spaced out on it. Um, so we haven't really read the paper in detail yet, but you know we can talk about that maybe next class. OK, uh, William. Hello, hello, hello. Can you hear me? Pedro, go ahead. Oh, OK. Uh, Okay, so lots of weird things here on my Zoom. I, I was, I'm still trying to figure it out. So yeah, we decided to do the paper application. It will be more straightforward than the previous uh, idea. And um, uh, if we can replicate everything, replicate at least one or two results from the original paper. And I can show the original paper, but I don't know if we have enough time now. We can do that la next week. And uh, if we can do so quickly, re the replication of one or two results, we plan to extend it with more sophisticated intracellular models. That's great. Thank you. William? Oh, uh, yeah. So last time we talked, we just did some coding and I finished the codes. And I can share the screen to show you like what I, what I had done. So for right now, like I've hey, can you can you see the tweeted? Okay, yeah, I'll put it over here. So it's for C C condensed to condense, non condensed to condense, and the uh non condensed to the medium. So I coded it all and turn it into like, cause I use four loops for the whole thing. And then for if it's like, I'm just, if it's condensed then go to the next one and just like the neighbor type and things. So after that, I came up with this graph and the cells like in the left side. Yeah, but the problem is like, should I just like get because like when the paper in the paper it's like a really consistent like line, but this one is like kind of cricket with noises. Do I need to fix that or is that okay? Well, what what would you mean by fixing it? Like getting like the mean of two values because like when you zoom in, it's like jumping up and down. Right. So so these are stochastic models. And so mm -hmm. there is going to be fluctuation in okay. things like contact area. And so um, 
what you'll find is if you run the simulation many times, each time you run it, it'll be slightly different. Yeah. So uh, ultimately what you'll want to do is run the simulation. You'll have to write a, a, a Python script that will run the simulation uh, maybe a hundred times mm -hmm. and then yeah. combine the data sets for, for all of them and try to come up with a typical, a typical result. So that's okay. something one has to think about. It's not, it's not so straightforward. It's not so trivial to do that. Uh, but uh, to start with noticing that there is stochasticity is important and getting a sense of what determines that. You could change the temperature parameter, the fluctuation amplitude parameter, for example, in the simulation and see how mm -hmm. those how the fluctuation amplitude changes depends on that. Okay, yeah, uh, I'll try that. All right. Um, let's see, Jonathan. Hello. Um, I have been looking at for my project, uh, simulations of biofilm development. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a little difficult to find papers on it. So I'd love to talk with you about getting a specific one to model, uh, since most of them are computational simulations more so than actual modeling itself. Um, but probably I'll... I'm interested in early bacterial development, kind of where the initial uh, growth is happening and kind of how the sequestering of different uh, characteristics happen within the biofilm, uh, like fingerling development and such as aerobic versus anaerobic and potentially some uh, uh, like enzyme and uh, signaling concentrations, kind of how biofilms form different groupings to carry out different roles and kind of that. So, so, so a full simulation of bacterial biofilms is a very demanding, mm -hmm. demanding thing to do. Uh, there are simulations actually from our group, old ones mm -hmm. of simple nutrient limited growth of uh, okay. biofilm of a simple biofilm, one, one species biofilm. And, mm, and okay. Something you might do, you might try would be if you can do that, if you can replicate that old result of the single species biofilm, and that actually doesn't use anything more than effectively what we're going to do today in class. Okay. Although the simulation itself wouldn't run today because it's so old, it says it's from a different uh, era. Uh, but if you could do that, then you could ask the question, uh, if there were multiple uh, phenotypes of the bacteria, either different species of bacteria or else different states of the individual bacteria. They might have a swarmer state and a, and a, a proliferative state, for example. Mm -hmm. um, then you could add that to that basic simulation and extend it. So I okay. might look at that at that old old uh, uh, biofilm paper that used CompuCell. And would then, that be within the documents on the drive, or would that be something separate that would need to be provided? Uh, it's it's in the list in the uh, CompuCell webpage for for um, for publications using CompuCell. Okay, great. But uh, Hayden, maybe you can find it while it, we'll look it up for them. It's the it's the one with Poplowski. Uh, but if you search CompuCell biofilm, uh, you'll pull it up. There's only one paper, uh, and it's it's a pretty basic. It's pretty basic, uh, and one can do much. Uh, one can do better than that, but but it's a start. Okay, I have found the paper. It came right up. <laughs> okay, great. Um, and so take a look at that and. And I understand that you're looking to do something more sophisticated, but let's start with the let's start with that and see what we can where we. This can seems go. like a great point to start with, yeah. And that one I know you can replicate because I've done that with students in the past, so I know that one is an achievable one. Uh, uh, okay, great. Okay, uh, uh, Asantoshi. Yes, go ahead. 
Yeah, so I have been studying a paper on uh, abnormality of the blood vessels and like tumor cells. So I'll be replicating a few codes from the paper uh, for uh, for my project that is on live blastoma cells in the brain. Uh, so I, uh, I'll be studying on different cells like astrocytes, neurons, etc. So, yeah. So I, I'd like to, to, to look at the paper with you because, again, I, I think Jonathan and Santoshi both, uh, and also Emma, it, I understand why you want to be very ambitious. And I understand for your long-term projects that these things are very, that these complicated phenomena are of, of interest. But I also want to remember that we only have seven or eight weeks left in the class, in the semester. And so I want to make sure that we focus on things that we can deliver in the in the time scale of the class. If if that gives you a framework that you can then use to extend it later on, if you feel like it, that's fantastic. And thinking about these more complex problems is is a good thing. But uh, for the moment, um, I think the key thing is just to make sure that we we uh, uh, have something that you can. You can achieve in the in the course of a semester since people are working independently uh, it's a little bit more work for each individual and so uh, i want to be realistic about what you can achieve i mean maybe i don't know william and jonathan could get together or william and santoshi could get together and work together as a team uh, I, I i i encourage people to think about that as a possibility and so i would like for next week for people to have a little presentation of uh the key ideas and maybe even if they have a little demo of, of where they are with things, I think that would be good uh, to make sure that we can make sure that the projects are achievable uh, and not too, not too, uh, not too uh, difficult for the semester. So I'd be happy to look at that paper with you, Santosh. Yes, sir. You you had I mean do you want to screen share it now to show us what the paper is or do you said uh, uh, I would like to uh, email you and so that we can discuss it later if that's okay. Okay, thank you everyone. Then, so coming back to this idea from last time, these key three concepts for diffusion, uh, diffusion time, uh, the distance squared divided by the diffusion coefficient, which is the typical time it take molecule takes to go a distance L, the diffusion length when there's decay or uptake, which is the distance over which the concentration decreases by a factor of E, um, and uptake behaves like the de de decay, so we can treat them to together. And that is the diffusion length is approximately the square root of the diffusion coefficient divided by the decay coefficient. Or if you had uptake and decay, it would be de decay plus d uptake in the denominator. And then the equilibration time, which is the time it takes to forget the original concentration, which is just one over the uptake rate or one over the decay rate. And we looked at the uh, diffusion with and without decay, uh, the linear gradient versus the exponential gradient. And we talked a little bit about how secretion worked. And key things are to think about uh, which cells or non-cellular objects that you've represented, for example, the boundaries of the simulation, uh, which cells are secreting, uh, where they secrete, where on their boundaries they secrete, uh, whether secretion happens everywhere, or for example, only if the cell's in contact with some other particular cell type or medium, and whether secretion happens with a constant flux, uh, constant rate of secretion, or a constant value at the boundaries. And uh, both of those happen biologically. Uh, constant flux uh, may feel more natural, but when you use constant flux, there's no potential limit to the value of the diffusion field. It can diverge. 
a constant value, you know you're never going to get a value bigger than the value of the, uh, the, the constant value. Uh, and we use the diffusion solver, the secretion plugin, uh, and Python. Um, and in this case, when we specify secretion uh, in those three places, all three of them act, not just one. Okay. And we looked at what that looks like, uh, the diffusion steppable. You have the diffusion in the diffusion steppable. You have a secretion block called secretion data. Secretion type, name of the cell, uh, secrete on contact, if you want that, uh, rate, or constant concentration. Uh, secretion plug-in, uh, the field name, the cell type, and again, secrete on contact, um, or constant concentration. And as usual, if we're going to uh, use the secretion in Python, you have a secretion plug-in by itself. Uh, you get the field secretor, which is a reference to the field that's doing, going to be secreted into. Um, and uh, we have a variety of options on that. We can get the total amount of chemical in the field. We can get the amount available to each cell, which is a very useful number to have. And we have the option of secreting inside cells at boundary, uh, outside cells on boundary, on contact, and so on. And uh, if we forget uh, the all the combinatorics of the options, uh, you look in Twitit or in the manual. Uh, something to remember is total amount is the amount secreted. And there's a net minus sign, so you have to watch out for minus signs on that. Okay. The additional thing that we have to remember with uptake is that uh, CompuCell doesn't provide a lot of fancy uptake rules. Uh, the basic uptake rule is that you have uh, uh, uptake being proportional to the concentration available up to some maximal uptake rate that saturates it. And uptake operates on a per pixel basis. And so uh, since cells have a lot of voxels, uh, the amount taken up uh, often has to be, you want to normalize it by the, the volume of the cell. And so uptake again has that same form. And I, I'm just f flashing these slides to you because you're going to be using these later. And I want people to try to remember the basics of how uptake and secretion work. Okay. We did some exercises uh, with a single cell secreting or taking up a chemical. Uh, we looked at the different uh, patterns of concentration as a function of position. Uh, for the different uptake rules, inside cell, inside cell at boundary, inside cell at center of mass, outside cell at boundary, and so on. And you see that the profiles at a long way away from the cell are about the same. As they get closer to the cell, the detailed profiles change quite a bit, depending on which rule I use. Another thing that we want to remember for constant, flu uh, constant fluxes uh, is that if we have a constant source, and a constant decay rate, uh, the equilibrium value, to get the equilibrium value, we set the left-hand side to zero, but make the time variation zero. Uh, we'll assume that the concentration is uniform, uh, so that the gradient is zero, and we're just left with minus gamma C plus S is zero, which means that the concentration is the secretion rate divided by the decay rate. And so if you have decay and a constant a source, the maximum value will be the source uh, flux divided by the decay rate. And you'll have to use that uh, to scale your problem uh, pretty often. So then we started building the avascular tumor. Uh, we said that we're going to have cells that are uh, consuming a nutrient, a limiting nutrient. We're going to assume initially there's a single limiting nutrient in our problem. Uh, the cells on the surface are going to see a high level of nutrient availability. They're going to proliferate. Uh, just inside that surface layer, there are going to be cells that have enough nutrient to live, but not enough to replicate. And that's going to be called quiescent cells. And then in the middle, there are cells that have starved so much that they die, and that's called a necrotic core and those cells typically will disappear. 
this three-layered structure of proliferating, quiescent, and necrotic is pretty typical of tumors, especially early tumors. Now, the rules for when cells actually proliferate, when cells uh, are quiescent, when cells are necrotic, are a little more complicated. Uh, there isn't usually a single limiting factor. Oxygen is important, glucose is important, growth factors are important. Um, and so the assumption that there's a single chemical that's going to determine these things is, is an oversimplification. Uh, but if you can do this for a single chemical, uh, you can do it for as many chemicals as you need because the computational structure will be the same for uh, adding additional chemical species. So I'd like people to go back to where we were last week, uh, which was the frozen tumor. And so I'd like people either to uh, pull up the code they had last week, and maybe in the chat, for that matter, people can just put uh, whether they have it. Um, uh, so what I want you to do is you can create 256 squared lattice, and there may be some inconsistencies in this in the uh, in the deck about whether we're on 256 by 256 or 100 by 100 or 128 by 128. 250, 256 by 256 is is gives you a little bit more room to play. It also runs a little bit slower, and so some some years I'm I'm I favor the the detail, and some years I favor the speed. Uh, but 256 by 256 is reasonable. And then I use a blob initializer to create a concentric rings of cells. Uh, you can make the cells eight by eight, and a single chemical field, we can call it oxygen, will use constant value boundary conditions uh, on the edges of the lattice. We could set the initial concentration to 10 everywhere. And the diffusion constant to 30 everywhere with no decay. And we'll create a secretor for oxygen. We'll create a tracking field, which we could call oxygen uptake, for example. And... Uh, in the Python, we'll create a secretor object uh, for all the cells, and they're going to take up oxygen, 0.1 of the available oxygen. It's actually a lot, as we'll find out, and a maximum uptake rate of 1,000. And then we we'll want to run the simulation with contour lines and look at what the oxygen field is. And the reason we're doing it this is that We want to uh, start out, but we're eventually we're going to be combining secretion, uptake, growth, change of cell type, and death. But when we have all of those things running in the simulation at the same time, it's rather hard to tune it. And so what we want to do is we're going to start out uh, by with a fixed set of cells, and we want to be able to define a set of rules that are going to give us a layer two cells thick that are proliferating on the surface of the tumor, a relatively thick layer of quiescent cells, and a necrotic core in the center of dying cells. And so to do that, what we first have to do is measure what the chemical field is as a function of the uptake, and then we'll define thresholds for the changes of cell type that will determine uh, what the thickness of the layers are. Okay, is that clear? And so let's let's give people a few minutes uh, to do this. And if you could maybe, uh, when you've got it in the chat, put in the chat just I'm ready when you're when you're ready. Again, we did this last week, but not everyone was able to follow last week. And so I'll make sure that everybody is able to get through this exercise. This is one of the fundamental simulations in in either CompuCell or PhysiCell. It's one of the basic simulations that anybody doing this kind of modeling does. And so it's pretty important to be able to replicate that. And if people get stuck uh, in the student materials folder, demos, uh, lecture, lecture nine demos, uh, all of the uh, code that you need is there. Uh, but do give yourself a few minutes to try and generate it on your own before you before you give up and pull the code from the 
repository. On the other hand, if if you don't, if at the end of five minutes or so, ten minutes, you don't have this exercise done, I'd rather you pull the code and start from that so we can continue together. Okay. Any questions about that? So Emma asks, uh, in Blob Initializer, you want, how do you set the multiple radii? And that's a great question. Actually, it's not Blob Initializer is not as sophisticated as that. Uh, Peter Fife has been writing fancier initializers that are in the new version of CompuSol, but we are not teaching them yet. Um, what you're going to do with Blob Initializer is actually uh, call it three times. The first time you'll draw the outer circle, uh, the proliferating one with radius 100. And then you'll call the next one, you'll draw the quiescent circle with radius 70. And then the third one you'll call with the necrotic circle with radius 40. Because when you in, in the blob initializer, uh, the, the later ones overwrite the earlier ones. So if you called it in the opposite order, you'd put the little circle in first, then you'd erase it completely with the bigger circle, and you'd erase that completely with the bigger one. So yes, yeah, so you want to do the, make sure the order is biggest to smaller to smaller. Um, could you check my attempt to use the blob initializer? I'm kind of um, sure. not getting what I expected. Okay, let's see. Okay. Um, I'll just show... Sorry, it's a bit busy on my screen. Um, okay, here's my attempt. Did I misunderstand about the ordering? So you might want to put all of the you. It, this should work, but I would get rid of the. I would put the regions in. I'd get oh, rid. Oh, like this. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, and okay. the end steppable. The other end steppable. End steppable. There go. So that should looks that looks all right. You have the Let center me. at 128, radius 100, gap, yeah. yes, proliferating, yes. This looks fine. Why don't we see what happens? I can always be wrong, but let's see. Okay. Okay, there we go. I can work on adding the other stuff. Um, what do you mean by constant value um, boundary condition specifically on the lattice. So if we go, why don't we screen share again and let's look at that together. So in the, in the chemical, in, in the diffusion solver, mm -hmm. um, we're, let's see. Okay. I've got to rearrange my screen. When I have when I have screen share going from you, I have to rearrange the screen compared to the way it's laid out for. Uh, okay, so in the in the in the diffusion field, what we want is the boundary conditions, is yes constant value, and here if we look at if we look at line sixty seven mm -hmm. to lines eighty one, mm -hmm. we have the boundary conditions. And here you have a constant value boundary conditions, yeah. but you're setting the boundary values to be zero. So in this case, you're absorbing oxygen at the boundaries. Mm -hmm. And so you'd want to make those values of 10 each okay. so that you have a source of oxygen from the outside. Okay. And then uh, if you look up, uh, let's just looking through the other things that we're trying to do here, it says... Um, we want there to be uh, the diffusion constant should be 30 everywhere with no decay. And right, so that's 30, yeah. that's perfect. But then you um, have to look at lines 50 through uh, 55. Uh huh, for the which, cell types, which are overwriting that. Oh. So you want to get rid of that. Oh. Um, yeah, it's tricky because because you can specify certain kinds of information in multiple places. Uh -huh. it, it's you always have to look and make sure that you you only specified it once, um, and that's one of the things that the purpose of the simulation is for is to is to try to help people 
and get a sense of what makes sense. In other words, how to know, oops, I left the left the decay coefficient in when I shouldn't have, that kind of thing. Okay. Um, what is meant by on the lattice? Um, maybe I should have said at the lattice boundaries. Okay. Been. I thought maybe you wanted secretion at like the edge of each, but that would just be from each cell. I, yeah, I was confused. Okay. Um, thank you. I'll rephrase that for next year. Okay, anything else there that's not, not clear at the moment? Better screen share the screen share the instructions again. Jonathan, are you able to, is that coming together for you? Uh, yeah, I did uh, look at the demo, though. That's okay. The end, but okay. but I, I have run it, and I'm getting FPP plugins not defined errors. That's not a, it's that's a warning. Running. Yeah. FPP not defined is a warning, and it doesn't do anything, so. Yeah, so it's I'm getting steps. I'm I'm seeing gradients begin and form and, right. and whatnot. So, okay. Uh, what about uh, Santosh? How is that going for you? Yeah, I'm trying with the blob initializer, so I'm trying to run the code. Listen. And William. I'm trying with the the drive one and I don't know why when I put it in player it just doesn't let me play you want to screen share it yeah uh, let's see uh, so I pulled this one is it this one can you see my screen yeah Okay, so when I it's like open and player mm -hmm. over here, it just like pops out and do nothing. Well, why don't you? Um, it's like over here. Why don't you start player separately then? Mm -hmm. You can start player just by hitting the icon. Well, okay. Oh, okay. Doesn't matter. So when I press this one, it just. The one I use to play. Right. So now why don't you open the simulation, the other simulation? Then. What? So, it's like... Uh... Go to player. Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, go to player. Where is your player? It just pops out. <laughs> yeah, over here. Don't, don't keep... Okay. Fine. Now in player, go to file, open simulation file. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now open the simulation exercise. No, but you have to know whether you're you have to know whether you're pointing to a a zipped file or an unzipped file. Did you unzip it? Yeah, I unzip it. Okay. Well, you're you're pointing to a zipped file. Okay. Wait. Isn't it isn't it just like unzip this one? Okay. So now so now open the open. You have to open. Go to open. No. Oh, open. I thought it's go in player. Yeah, it's in player. Okay, fine. Okay, fine. Go to player. Point to the point to the folder which has the simulation in it. Okay, and now that yes, now click play. Yeah, it just break down. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the problem is that you have the you have to put the simulation folder 
into a directory where you have write access. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll try to do that. No, why don't, why don't we do it together? Okay. Yeah. Why don't you so, copy, the, copy the simulation folder to your desktop? Is that the zipped one or the unzipped one? The unzipped one. Okay, fine. And now, yeah. now Compute open, open that with your player and run it. Thank you. Sorry, Emma. I should have suggest I should have suggested that earlier. I normally make that suggestion at the beginning of these things, and I forgot to say that today. Okay. Yeah, it just doesn't pop up. Uh, yep. Well, what are the errors? What is the error it's showing? It's it doesn't shows any error. It just like the terminal. It's like attempt to write a read only database. Read only database. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that definitely means. That somehow, somehow it believes that you are. Configuration setting. Will it run another, will it run another simulation? Uh, I can try the other one. Uh, let's see. I mean, this this isn't a comp yourself problem. It's a, it's a it's it's an issue of the way you've got your directory structure. Okay. I don't know quite what to tell you here. Um. I don't know. Hayden, do you want to try to go into a breakout room maybe and try to do some debugging here? If you have it working, either because you've written it already or because um, you've uh, downloaded the existing code, uh, you can, and instead of waiting, uh, you can try changing the uptake fraction and the maximum uptake, for example, and seeing how that affects the field and the amount available per cell. If you were interested, you could try changing the size of the cells, for example, the initialization uh, or the level of the oxygen field. So there's a lot you can explore even with this very simple simulation. I think something that's particularly important is, is the question in number eight here which is if you look in the tracking field at the amount of oxygen taken up by each cell, uh, look along the midline and ask the question, how does the availability of the oxygen change uh, from the surface of the tumor to the center? In particular, how many cell layers have a significant amount of oxygen? Does the oxygen go all the way through the tumor or is it only available at the surface or is there some range of... Uh, over which it's available. What's the profile? Emma, how's it going? Stuck on tracking fields. Okay. Um, let me let me just show you people, remind people on tracking fields. Uh, let me see here. I have to find the right window. Are people seeing my Twitter? Uh, 
Let me make sure the screen share. Uh, we're seeing the command. No, oh, okay. Here we rather go. than Twitter itself. Okay. Okay. So, reminder on tracking fields. Um, the tracking field is initialized in the init. Um, and again, if you don't remember the syntax, you can go to CC3D Python. And then here would be extra fields automatic tracking, track scalar attribute. And here I created a field name oxygen uptake. Uh, attribute name here was oxygen available. Could you quickly um, explain what field name and attribute name refer to and whether they have to already exist when you initialize the tracking field? So, so the tracking field is has two components, one of which is it's going to be something that you can display in player. And so the field name will be what will show up in player. And you can give that any name provided it's not something crazy like weird characters or starting with a number or something like that. Uh, attribute name is going to link that field to a dictionary key for the cells. And so this name, again, can be any legal string. And in Python, the string really can be anything. So it can be any sequence of characters except an empty string. And so I first create the tracking field here, name of the tracking field, the attribute of the cell. I could have used the same name, but I didn't because I thought it was confusing to have them be the same. And now here I define a secretor, which is going to say I'm going to be taking up oxygen from the environment. And then I go over all cells and I do a secretion uptake inside cell total count, which returns the amount uptaken. Uh, 0.01, the fraction of the available amount uptaken. 1,000, the maximum amount I can take up. And then I copy the amount of that, which is res.total underscore amount, into cell.dict oxygen available. Notice oxygen available here matches oxygen available here. And this uh, minus sign, because the, the, the amount taken up returns a negative number. Is it returning a negative number just because it's tracking the total change and it's that disparity is the difference? Exactly. Okay. Um, I, I I would prefer it if the default were the other way, but since it, since it was set up like that 10 years ago when we did it the first time, we don't want fixing it would break everybody's simulation. So, so <laughs> just, you'd have with, to change everything. That... <laughs> Or you can multiply by negative one. <laughs> so, so. It's 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 giving the amount from the point of view of the field. So the, the, the chemical is being taken out of the field. So the amount in the field is decreasing. So that was the argument for making it a negative number. From the point of view of cell, it's a, from the point of view of the cell, it's a positive number. From the point of view of the field, it's a negative. I guess just as a general design philosophy, is it better to think of things as a in totality rather than an individual part then? Well, that was I think that was the argument. Here we were thinking about the total amount from the from the point of view of the chemical field. Um I'm not sure there's a better a better or a worse. Uh ch sometimes changing those perspectives is very valuable. Um one of the problems with cancer therapy is that cancers develop tum tumors develop resistance to chemotherapies mm -hmm. and 
uh, that's actually something that they're CompuCell simulations of. Uh, Physicel, there's some very nice simulations of it. Uh, the Moffitt group uh, in Tampa uh, has put those things in very serious use in, in developing cancer therapies of using their own code, not, not, not CompuCell or Physicel. Uh, and, and a lot of the advances in cancer therapy in the past few years have been come about because people have flipped instead of thinking about cancer from the point of view of you, the host that has the cancer, you think about cancer from the point of view of the individual cancer cells. Instead of thinking about what's bad for you as the host, you think about what's good for the individual cancer cell. And that gives uh, often strategies that are more effective at fighting cancer because it gives you ideas about how to avoid the development of resistance to chemotherapies. Oh, very interesting. So that flipped. So, so, so your question was, you know, which point of view is better? The answer, I think, is you want to try to flip back and forth between both, uh, because you you see different things looking from the different directions. Okay. Okay. How's it going with this, Emma? How's it now debugging? Okay. So, William, I guess you got Hayden was able to get things working for you. Yep, I got it. It's like I I could open the files with it unzipped, uh, like zipped. I couldn't open it without with it unzipped. So it's like I need to open it with the zip file. Okay, so maybe Macs aren't unzipping properly. Maybe they don't like a Windows zip file. Yeah. <laughs> As long as it's working now, that's what matters. Mm -hmm. Okay, Santi Santoshi, how's it going for you at this point? Uh, I'm working on the steppables. Uh, um, this is the only steppable that you need, is the one that's on yeah, the screen. Yeah, I'm just trying to correct it, that's it. And again, I think I think in the interest of time, I'll give people another till till 5.50, and if you haven't gotten it by 550, I think then I'll ask you to, to download the 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 example file so we can. Um, could you just check on the output that I got when I tried to print the secretion result? Okay. Tell sure. me if it looks normal. Okay, I can just show you in the terminal. Mm -hmm. So I just have the variable that contains um, what you get when you use secretor dot uptake outside cell at boundary mm -hmm. with the parameters that we discussed. And um, I just printed that. And this is what I got here. I uh, think. Let's see, where is it? I'm trying to see where. Oh, uh, should I share the whole screen? Maybe that's not what I thought I was printing. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Um, okay, so Boolean. Okay, so let's see what. Let's see your code. I think is probably better. So I think. I think um, you're getting an error that I. I but but I, I, let's see what. Let's see the code for a second. Okay. Okay. Can you make it a little bit bigger? Because that's. Uh, um, There's uh, under view, you should be able to change zoom. Okay, okay. great. So that's fine. That was zoom out. Oh, it's not the same keyboard shortcut I see. Okay, is that better or should it be bigger? That looks that looks fine. That's okay. fine. Okay, so you say secretion results, secretor uptake. Um, okay. Uh, I would probably use inside cell at boundary, but it doesn't matter. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then you say secretion result. It's not. So this is the the toad amount. Um, right. That throws the error, but I just wanted to print it to see what it was. Mm -hmm. And I think this is what I got, but I'm not sure. So secretion result mm -hmm. is going to be a complex object. It's not a. It's it's a it's, right. a, it's a. So so. 
but um, it didn't you know sometimes it will say oh it's this object okay so oh well so there's if you look at your code for a second maybe it's this no let, let's look at your code uh-huh um you're doing uptake outside cell at boundary but you're not doing total amount okay what is the total amount so so the syntax you need mm -hmm. let me come back to my code for a second is this it and and unfortunately the 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 words total amount total get get um it's not very consistent the syntax is this okay oh it's total count i see uh what does that mean i yeah i missed the that part of the class okay so i guess i zoomed past it a little fast this afternoon so so there are a lot of different possible options for secretion uh -huh. you can, you can uh, uptake you can t uptake inside the cell outside the cell at the boundary inside the cell at the on contact with this and so on um, another thing is do you keep track of how much you took up or not mm -hmm. and so total count tells it that it should report how much it took up if you don't do total count it does the absorption, but it doesn't keep track of it. Okay. And you could say, why wouldn't you oh. want to keep track of it? But that's a, that, that's a long story. So that's probably the issue. Um, I was asking for the total amount, but it hadn't recorded it. Right. That's, that's well, right. Now, now it'll work. You need to print it. Uh, all right. And the thing that's a little bit strange is it's total underscore, tot underscore amount. But mm -hmm. it's total count in the in the name of the uh, in the name of the uh, okay okay um, so, so does that run now? Let's see. Okay, is it crashing or is it running for you? Well, I click play and um, we, yeah, it's running. Okay, it's a slow. Now let's look at oxygen uptake. There you go. Okay, and you'll have to hit run again after you change the fields display. Notice. Okay, so that seems to be working. I'm not sure why the minimum value is why the max <laughs> negative and the min is. Do we oh, have do we have our maybe I, yeah, I forgot that. That's what it is. Um after I change it. Okay, and for people for people who who are stuck, please please download and run the the demo. So we, there we go. So okay, so now we do oxygen field. There we go. And, so this is okay. And you can you can always create additional um, you can always create additional display windows. So you can have three three or four of them if you want to monitor all things at once. the the button if you look at if you go all the way to the right in that menu bar that you're in now no well not not sorry in 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 the player bar the player the player menu bar uh, no where, where you just there you go yeah uh go up that one we'll create a new window yeah oh well i don't think it like that oh that's interesting why did that crash it did put unexpectedly. Right. Not all right, but. Uh, uh. Okay. Well, actually, it might. Okay. Well, now it's fine. I can make one window for each. Field. Right. I was saying it's it's convenient to have one for each. Uh, okay. Cells here, uh, oxygen here, and uptake here. Now here, run, and you'll be able should be able to see things. But... There you go. Not sure why CompuCell is so slow on your computer. It's interesting. I mean, when it's running CompuCell and Zoom at the same time, I think my computer gets very tired. Yeah, that Zoom and Zoom Zoom reaches into the video cards in a funny way. Huh. And um, uh, I, I I find that occasionally uh, CompuCell will crash when I'm using Zoom when it's fine otherwise. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So no, here. I so here you basically do have um, 
Uh, what's missing, what looks like it's missing here is you didn't freeze yourself. Oh, I didn't do that, no. Uh, but uh, okay. so you sort of jumped ahead to the next step of the, the of the exercise. But Sorry then, about that. Uh, it's just like this, right? Am I misremembering this? Uh, no, it's in it's in the uh, it's in the cell type declaration. Oh, oh, okay. Is it the same tags? Uh, oh, you put it in the name of the. Yeah, and uh, uh, I actually have to look that one up. I don't remember that. I never remember syntax for that. Let me get it for you. Yeah, that's not. Okay. I put it in the chat. Wait, I don't want to freeze the medium. Yeah, medium you can't freeze. No. But the others you can. Um, oh, it's okay. Cell type, and you need uh, double freeze equals quote yeah. quote. Okay. Um, now let's see what happens. Um, wait, I need a new window. Okay. Okay. There we go. So now you can see what the amount taken up by each cell is in that oxygen uptake picture particular you can read it off from the uh -huh. yeah so obviously there's no uptake where there are no cells there's a lot of uptake um, right at the edge of the tissue and then in the middle there's just this middling amount That's right. and you want to keep track of those numbers let it, let it run for a little while so the other thing that 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 the instruction suggested but you didn't do which is not a big deal is it said to start with an initial concentration of oxygen of 10 everywhere? Oh, and I the, tried to do that. Let me check that. The reason for that, the reason for that is not that it's wrong to do it from the outside. It just takes a little bit longer for the simulation to settle down if you start with zero everywhere. And so uh it uh it speeds it up a little bit. So yeah, if you make initial concentration 10, there we go. There, okay. Okay, so I think I see it there in the background. Here. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And there. Now it'll be. It, it still takes a little time to equilibrate, but it, it, it equilibrates a little faster. Yeah. Okay, great. Does anybody else need help getting this going as everybody else has it? Anybody? Thank you. Okay. No, well, thank you, Emma. It's it's great. I really appreciate people who are willing to 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 try things together because I think doing doing the coding and showing where you get stuck helps everybody in the class. So I really do appreciate your being willing to do that. Okay. Uh, professor, I'm getting an error uh, with the with the secretor. Uh, could you please help me? Mm -hmm. Okay. Why don't we take a look together? So okay, I'll just share my entire screen. So um you have uh here you have the uh, what happened to the XML here? Uh there is, apparently there is an error over here. So so you just start from the top of your XML. So do you do you understand what the structure of XML tags is? You have blocks, which are where you have a declaration of a start of a block and the end of a block. 
Um, and so here you have uh, a metadata block, a POTS block. And then if you look in line 21, you have a plugin called cell type. But then you've pasted the uh, blob initializer in the middle of a block. Mm -hmm. So when you add a block in, in XML, you always have to put that in a place where it's not overwriting something that already is there. Okay. So So no, you have to move that. Um, so I think I think it would be helpful maybe to review the basics from lectures one and two of the class. Um, we can we can go over this here again, but this is something we covered uh, at the beginning of uh, of the semester. Um, so you have your cell type declaration here. You have a typo already in line twenty two because you can't have an unmatched um, unmatched carrot. Okay. So you're going to have to change, get rid of line 22. You have to erase line 22. Okay. Now you have your cell types, and you only have one cell type. You haven't declared the other cell types. So you would have to declare the additional cell types, all three cell types. Um, okay, then I'll work on it then. So why don't you please please load the uh, example that I, I provided. Okay. Um, and why don't we work from there? Take why don't you we we you go download the code that that I provided for in the in the yeah. chat and, yeah. and do that. Um, I'm sorry. I just I'd like to I'd like to walk you through all of that, but but I'm afraid it'll take it'll take quite a while to to fix that at the moment. Okay, okay sure. So I think it might be better to to uh, uh, you'll 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 get to do all of the exercises, um, starting with the code that was provided. So you'll okay. get practice with that with that from the code that we provided. Thank you. Okay. Okay, well, um, it's not so easy to get these things the first time. And so, uh, on the other hand, I hope that once you've done it a few times, it gets a little easier. Okay, so um, just some things to remember. Uh, this, When you're going to refer to a chemical field, you have to get a field reference for secretion. So here, self.getField secretor is important code because that's how you refer to the code, to the, the secretion. Um, and then we were using secretor uptake inside cell total count. This is what Emma was, the, the, you need the total count there to tell it to report the total count. Um, one thing is if you're going to use the secretor, uh, you can actually put the uh, secretor reference into the start function. It runs a little bit faster but if you want that to then be available later on, you have to self-dot it. That's very Pythonic. So in this case, we got the secretor each Monte Carlo step, but we don't have to get the secretor every Monte Carlo step because the oxygen field doesn't change. So we could put it in the start function, but if we want it to be available outside of the start function, we have to do self-dot. If if you're not uh, if you're not uh, Pythonic and remember the self dots, then for scoping, uh, then I wouldn't worry about it too much. Okay, and so you should have gotten something that looked like this, whether uh, with the code you wrote yourself or the or the downloaded code. 
And I think Emma, you had that look like that for you. Okay. And so um, the next thing that I was hoping people could do is last time, remember we learned how to plot as a as a as a as a as a scientific plot the value of a concentration. And so what I'd like people to do is create a plot, which is the oxygen concentration along the midline of the simulation. And uh, if it may help you uh, that self.dim.x and self.dim.y are the size of a simulation, if you're going to be iterating, and it's useful to calculate the diffusion length by hand, how far the oxygen is, should get into the tumor. Uh, you know what the diffusion constant is. You know what the uptake fraction is. Uh, that will give you the square root of that gives you a length. Uh, in this case, it's 30 divided by 0.1. So the square root of 300. Um, that is in voxels. Your cell diameter is 8, so you can calculate how many cell diameters you expect the oxygen to get into the tissue. And if you change the diffusion constant and the uptake rate, or you change the maximum uptake rate to saturate, you'll get different results. Okay. So is that exercise clear? And again, if you get stuck here, We have the code for that as well. But this isn't too bad an exercise. You have to create a you have to create a a, a field a plot in the start function uh, using the code snippet in in Twitter, and then you have to iterate over the lattice and read the field value and plot it as a function of position. And maybe, Jonathan, if you can get this to work, then you can show it to us when you're ready. Okay. Uh, give me a second. Okay. Ah, one problem, one problem with lecturing by, by Zoom, uh, I don't cough on you is a good thing. Uh, the less good thing is that there seems to be a thunderstorm at the moment. So if if the class ends suddenly because the power goes out, I apologize. Uh, of course, the power might go out at, at Luddy, too. Although it, it's really we're... raining heavily here. <laughs> it's coming down. I think the university power is a little more reliable than the city power, but uh, I can't promise. Hayden has generally generously said that if if for some reason I lose power, he'll take over the class because he's he's up in Indianapolis. So uh, it's certainly possible that we both lose power at once, but that would be a little less likely. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah. We had our rainstorm a couple hours ago. I don't know which way this one's headed. Well, they usually head you know, southwest to northeast, but but uh, every now and then they do something unusual. Pedro says that he's he's doing these exercises both in CompuCell and in a different modeling framework. So he's he's doing paired exercises where he's doing it in CompuCell and in tissue form. That one I'm not going to ask people to do. Although maybe if we have time at the end of class, you could show us what you got. Oh, that and CC3 Python API. Okay, sorry. I thought you meant I thought you meant you were doing a tissue function. Python API is useful too. So this is what you're trying to get. You're trying to get the oxygen profile as a function of position. And if do people remember how to set up a, a to set up a uh, a scientific plot, or do people want okay? Uh, now might be a good time for me to try to show you the bug that I had and see if I can reproduce okay. it in this exercise. Okay. Well, I have to try to put in the code first. Sorry, one second. And I gave I gave the result of the previous one, which is if you do the hand calculation, um, the diffusion constant is 30, the decay constant is about 0.1, square root of 300 is about 17. Now the cell diameter is eight, so that's about two cell diameters. So it means the two cells, the cells on the outside, the two cell layers at the surface of the tissue get a reasonably high amount of oxygen everything further in gets pretty not much. And again, I put I put uh, a link to the the demo uh, if you if you're having trouble getting it to work. So for people who want a reminder of what this looks like, here in the start function, I create a plot window, oxygen concentration. 
within the plot window, I add a plot series oxygen concentration. And then in the step function, I'm only going to plot it once every 10 Monte Carlo steps. I'm going to, if I, if I keep overwriting the plots, that's interesting, but I get a lot of extra information too. So in this case, I'm going to clear the plot uh, at the beginning. I get a reference to the field. And then I iterate over my X range. And I add to that time series the X position and the field value uh, along the midline. Okay. People, people, I can put that code in the chat if people want it. There are plenty of ways you can do that. That's not the only one. But that would be one way to do it. Is that working for you, Satoshi? Great. Does everybody have, have a version of that working? Or people need more time? Okay, so the next thing to do is actually something that only takes about uh, about uh, two minutes because there's no coding involved, which is we calculated that the oxygen is only getting two cell diameters into the tissue. And so now the question is, if I change the uptake rate, what do I have to do to get the oxygen to go four cell diameters into the tissue? Do I have to make the uptake rate bigger or smaller? Somebody. If I want the oxygen to get deeper into the tissue. Bigger. If I make the uptake rate bigger, then I take up more at the surface and I get... It'll, sat it'll saturate it? Well... Well, no, so so the uptake rate is how much oxygen I'm taking out of the available oxygen. Mm -hmm. and so if if the ox if the uptake rate is very high, the cells on the surface are very greedy, and that means the cells further in get very little. And so if I reduce actually I have to reduce the uptake rate. And the distance that I go is the square root of the diffusion constant divided by the uptake rate. And so if I want to double the diffusion length, I have to reduce the uptake rate by a factor of four. And so why don't people try that um, in the secretor plugin when you do this, when you do the uptake total count, divide that 0 0.1 by four and then run it again and see whether the oxygen comes further into the tissue or not. Why don't people see what that does, okay? Did that work for people? Kyle, I appreciate it because often our intuition about these things is not what is not right. Counterintuitive. Right. And so, and so, it's great. It's it's really valuable to say I expect it to. I expect it that if I increase the uptake rate, that it'll go further in. That's great. Then you try it and you see. So, asking the question, "What do I expect?" before you do the numerics, I think is really important. So, thank you for that. No problem. Anybody else did 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 that work for people? 
Okay, and now once you've done that, now look at your uptake, your uptake profile and ask the question, how much oxygen is available per time step for the proliferating cells? How much is available for the quiescent cells and how much for the necrotic cells? Uh, here I've asked you to do it actually computationally, uh, but uh, don't do not do that. Just read it off of your screen. And why don't people just type in the chat, uh, look at the look at the picture you got uh look at the uptake look at the uptake uh tracking field and ask the question for the cells that are of type quiescent what's the typical about take it up per time step for the cells that are of type Proliferating, what's the typical about take it up per time step? For the cells that are type necrotic, what's the typical about take it up per time step? Is that a clear is that a clear request? Um maybe somebody uh if somebody has it running, William, do you have this running? Uh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so why don't you screen share it and we can do this together? Okay. Mm -hmm. So okay, so okay, over so here, do, right? No, you don't have to change any code. Well, maybe the code, the code, the code that you might change is the uptake rate. So let's see at the uptake rate. Mm. You mean over here? Um, you've already done it. It's already you've, you're using a later version that already has this in. So in line 38, 30, 38, 40, 42, and 46, it's mm -hmm. already taking up 0 0.1 divided by 4. So you've already done what you need here. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is actually doing the this is actually doing the more complicated uh, simulation that I'm asking for here, but okay. So why don't we run the code? Run the code, show it in player. Oh, it's over here. Okay, and why don't you display the uptake field? No, in the in, where you have cell field, where you say cell field select oxygen uptake. Oh, okay, oh, my bad. <laughs> okay, or good. Okay, so now right now run it. Okay, now what we want to look at is this picture here, and it would be helpful to have another display window where you have the uh, cell types as well. Oh, uh, okay. crashed when you. Yeah. That I don't understand. I don't understand why adding the window seems to cause a crash on a Mac. I think if you hit pause first, it won't crash. But I don't okay, know. I'll try. <laughs> Let's try Let's that. Start, run, start start running it again. Run it again. I think I need to restart. Wait, 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 wait for a sec. Okay. Be back with uh right here. Okay. It should remember what you were running. No, you're 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 trying to unzip it again. All right. Well. <laughs> no, you're 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 trying to. Mm. Okay. Well, this is way past that. This is not that. Okay, but it's on. Okay. So please, please show another. Please create another plot window. You mean this one? Yes. Okay. okay. And show the cell types in one window. I see. See, this is a different simulation. This isn't the one that I asked. Oh, about. yeah. I opened the wrong one. Uh... I 
you've downloaded one of the the fancier simulations of later ones. Okay. <laughs> no, well, you want you want actually one point three is the one you want. One point three. Okay, I'll download that one. If you've got one point two, that's fine too. I think that's the one point one. We want one point two or one okay. point. Uh, uh, point one doesn't have the thing you need. Wait, let me got it downloaded. Uh, well, he's doing it. Does somebody else want a screen share? Perhaps Emma, do you have it? Um, I'm making some changes right now, so uh, maybe in like one minute, I I can run it again. Or Jonathan, do you have it? Or Pedro? So are you asking for the plots? Uh, just, just I just want to see the uptake, the uptake uh, tracking field. I I think I have it. Uh, so I did this plot, which is the total amount per cell. Uh, it it starts very negative and it raises. Because so the, the inner cells take less and less field. And I'm tracking the cells in a thin um like I, I take a, a slice of the tumor in the x direction, a thin slice in the middle, and here is the plot of the amount you're taking up. Is that is that accurate or did you ask for something else? Well, let's see. Um First, I would flip the sign so that it's positive amount, mm -hmm. um, and then you're you're doing more than I asked for because I asked just to do. I was just going to read it off by by eye, but that's fine. Um, so you're plotting um, the the amount taken up. So one thing, why don't you float the go in your graphics window for the oxygen field? Why don't you float the uh, the display? Don't make it zero to one, since the field value is zero to ten. Just in your in your in your settings for the for the here. No, for the field, for the oxygen field. Uh, so, uh it's it's. My my maximum is one here. I set the right. boundaries. So, so so change. Oh, you see, you you okay? So your field, you so you didn't set the the concentration to ten at the boundary. No, I set one. Okay, fine. So we have to multiply everything by ten then to to to. Okay, fine. And and what is that? What are the what are the uptake rates and the diffusion constant? Um. Zero 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 one. So okay. it should be point one divided by four. And the maximum should be one thousand. Yeah, it's never gonna reach either, I guess. Okay. And then what's the diffusion constant in the XML? I set to zero point one. The default. It's supposed to be thirty. And then get rid of the diffusion coefficients and the decay coefficients in 74 through 79. Okay. And then also set the initial concentration to 10. And boundaries too? Oh, well. Yeah, why don't you make the boundaries 10 so it's the same as everybody else's? Otherwise, it'll be confused. Okay. And the, okay. Same, and the same for Y. Or did you, you already changed it? Okay, fine. Yeah, let's okay. try that. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. This is good. Perfect. So let's let this run. And we can now see that how many, approximately how many cell diameters uh, does the chemical get in? Well, it's four, we see four, the outer ones get five. And then the next layer gets four point something, and uh, the one inside that has uh, 
I'm actually a little bit puzzled by what's happening here. Let's see. Is this running? No, it's stopped. Yeah, right. it stopped because it reached a uh, steady state already. Oh, it hasn't. I don't think. I mean, I don't see any change in the graph anymore. It's running. A hundred by a hundred. Oh, okay. All right. Um something is not then then it's something is that we said is not what we think it is. So Just, maybe there are two things that are different. First, the, the, the lattice size is different and the cell volumes, maybe. Okay. But it's it's possible. Um Why don't people? Well, why don't people report? For me, let me just give you, let me just give you my results, and we'll move on. We'll move on from there. This is why I, I am, I'm using uptake inside cell. That's right. Uptake inside cell is is correct. All right. So it's not boundary. No. Okay. So what I got here when I ran it was that the available oxygen per time step for proliferating cells was about seven. For quiescent cells was about 3.5, and for necrotic cells was about 2.5. What did you get, Pedro? Um, let me see here. So my necrotic cells in the uh, got three. Okay. My quiescent cells, they are... 30, 30 is four. And my proliferating got almost five. So the, I'm sort of surprised that there isn't a bigger difference between proliferating and quiescent. But that's if that's what you got, that's fine. What about other people? Did people get, um, what did other people get for available oxygen for proliferating quiescent and necrotic? Alex, did you try it? Yes. I said I wasn't going to call on you, but then I'm called. Proliferating. It doesn't have to be exact. It's just an approximate. Necrotics, about 2.5. Yeah. Quiescence, 3.77. Yep. And the proliferating is 5. Okay. Okay. Anybody else get it? Uh, I'm getting kind of similar results to Alexander. Okay, great. Okay. You probably want to write those numbers down because you're going to need them for the next step. Maybe screenshot it if you like. Again, if you set things slightly differently, if your uptake rate is slightly different or your configuration is slightly different, your numbers will be slightly different. Okay, so now the next now things become more interesting, and we'll do this one exercise, and then we'll take a break. Um, now, what you want to do is you want to change the cell type. So you've got a line where you read the amount of oxygen available to the cell, and now you're going to say if the cell type is proliferating. And the available oxygen is less than seven times a half, 3.5. Then I change the cell type. I say cell dot type equals self dot quiescent, all caps. I say if the cell type is quiescent and the oxygen availability goes up to two thirds times seven. Then I say cell dot type equals self dot proliferating all caps. If I'm a quiescent cell and the oxygen level goes below two thirds times 3.5, I say cell dot type equals self dot necrotic or whatever you called it. Is that, is that a clear thing to do? So you'll have Uh, three if statements 
In each shift statement, you check the type of the cell. You're going to iterate over all your cells, which you're already doing. You check the type. If the type is proliferating and the oxygen level is below the threshold, you switch the type to quiescent. If the oxygen the cell type is quiescent and the oxygen level is above the threshold, you switch the type to proliferating. If the oxygen if the cell type is quiescent and the oxygen level is below the second threshold, you switch the type to necrotic. Okay. Give that a try. And if you if you if you get bored because that went to it got through that faster than everybody so other than other people, um, you could try having the quiescent cells take up uh, a quarter of the oxygen that the proliferating cells do, and the necrotic cells take up no oxygen. And that will change the profile of your chemo of your oxygen field, and then you'll have to adjust the thresholds a little bit. I'll give you a sample code for one of those. One of those. Now, if you called the cell type something different, like quies or something shortened, then you'll have to change the type names to be whatever you used. So why don't you see if you can follow that pattern for the other two or the other two type transitions? Now, if you want to be a little bit ambitious, you could add a plot which has the number of cells of each type versus time. That's actually a pretty useful thing to have. So you've already got one scientific plot, so you can copy the lines for that to create a second plot window. And then you'd add a data series for the number of quiescent cells, the number of necrotic cells, and the number of proliferating cells. And that you'll plot versus time. Did the code I provided work for people? Or is that a problem? Emma, you're looking puzzled. I realized there was something wrong with my oxygen concentration plot. And I thought it was that I was plotting the oxygen concentration in the medium instead of in the cells. But now I can't figure out how to get at the oxygen concentration in the cells. It's again with the tracking fields. Okay, let's take a look. Okay. So I'm trying to figure this out. Okay. Um, right, so this doesn't make any sense. I need to be, I guess, looking at each cell then. No, well, so so the plot the plot you're plotting is the oxygen concentration mm -hmm. position, which is fine. What Pedro what Pedro showed was the oxygen constant the uptake rate per cell. Oh, okay. Which which is something that's useful, but wasn't what I asked to do. What mm -hmm. it was more than what I asked for. It was more a little more extra. Okay. So what you had before was fine, which was just yeah. There you go. That's fine. Yeah. Um. And now let's look at this the cell types. Okay, let's let's see let's just see it see it run here. Oh, it's an indentation yeah. thing. I knew that was gonna happen. Ah, the joy of the joy of Python indentation. Yeah. Okay, I can't even see if these are that should... okay. Well then, that's a little weird looking. Uh, oh, uh, we've lost some of our cells. Yeah, so it looks like we only have, so the oxygen uptake, why don't we start from the beginning and just hit step function so we see the initial condition. Okay. okay. So the oxygen uptake is between zero and, okay. And the cell field, why do we start out with only two cell types? I think we start out with three. Okay. Oh, oh huh, that's odd. 
Oh. So like when I start, yeah. it must be because of this. So let's take a look at what you've got here. Let's just, so let's just look at your code together. So, so I'm not actually computing the mean here. I yeah, I have to actually do that. That's okay. That's okay. So let's say four cell. So let's let's not let's not worry about the mean. Let's just use the numbers we calculated by hand. Mm -hmm. so you say uh, you go through four cell and self type. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So you've already adjusted the uptake. Oh, so you're using the code. You're using the code. My 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 example code. Here, um, you, no, right? this is code that I wrote here, so it might have bugs. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. I just wanted to make sure because it looks similar, and I wanted to. Okay, so you have three proliferation rates. Uh huh. That's sorry. Three uptake rates. Uptake rates. Yeah, that's here. Okay. And so. Well, okay, so oh, okay, so you're already jumping ahead. Why don't we just start set all the uptake rates to be zero point one divided by four? Okay. Um, there. Okay. Fine. Okay, so now let's see. And now, um, you probably don't want to do the type transition right away. Okay. Because so put that inside an if MCS greater than five hundred or something like that. Oh, okay. Because you want things to stabilize. Uh-huh. At the beginning, the, the values won't be won't be what you expect. Okay? And you're gonna have to indent right there. Yeah. That's right. So it should and be now okay. let's see. Okay, so now if the type is three and your th type three was which one? Proliferating. Proliferating. Okay, if the dictionary oxygen available is less than mean over two, change it to two. Fine. If it's squiescent, if the oxygen is bigger than that, you change it to three. And if it's less, then you change it to one. That looks fine. Okay. The only thing I might do is instead of using the numbers one, two, three, I might use the self dot type name so that mm -hmm. it's easier to remember which is which. Okay. Yeah, I have to change that here too. I mean, it's not wrong to do it that way. It's, and 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 you have to keep you have to look up what the what the what the name was, but but to me that's a little bit easier. Now, if you look at the oxygen concentration, at the moment that's almost constant, right? It's 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 nearly the same everywhere. Mm -hmm. if you look at the field, the min is nine point seven, yeah. max is ten. Mm -hmm. So let's let that run for a while. Because it's going to take some time for that to equilibrate. Basically, this isn't very interesting. At the moment, all cells would become proliferating, right? Because mm -hmm. they all have lots of oxygen. Mm -hmm. Now the concentration in the center is going down. Mm -hmm. And so now it's going to become meaningful that they're different levels. Okay. And let's see, where are we here? 60 70. Well, it runs slow on your on your computer. I'm not sure why it's it's so slow. Anyway, let's only take us a few minutes. Maybe waiting to 500 was too long. But we'll be patient. Other people can work on it at the same time. Maybe there are things I could stop. I mean, I have these PDFs open. No, it's I don't I don't think it's that. Is it like in virtual machines where you're, you're only providing a certain amount of resources to it? Like, well, you you have an M1 Mac, right? Me? M1. No. Oh uh, no, I have an older one. Okay. So then, because the M1, I think it runs an emulator, so that might be slower. But I think the, the, the older Macs should be running native. So the, the Mac used to run much faster than the PC. So I'm a little bit surprised. I don't, I don't know what to say. Anyway. Uh, in any case, it's not that slow. It, it'll, it'll get there. Uh, it'll get there. Just have to. Just have it to really wait. shouldn't be slow because it's uh two point nine gigahertz i five. It should be fine. And this yeah. the, 
Yeah, it should be. But anyway, we'll just we'll give it. A, it'll only take another two minutes. Are other people getting this basic simulation to work? Um, but in fact, as 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 Pedro pointed out, the um, the uh, equilibration doesn't take it that long. I said five hundred; it's already equilibrated by two hundred. So we could have set the time. But let's now that we've gotten to three seventy, we might as well let it run through and not restart it. Okay. So the min here is 4.6, the max is 9. Mm -hmm. Uptakes we're not actually displaying, so we'll, we'll hope that we got those right. I could do oxygen. Okay, you'll have to hit run again for that. Uh -huh. to... Okay. There you go. Okay. So we should see some type changes, right, based on the Based on the the uh, the levels we set. Didn't we comment out the type chain? No, we didn't. Yeah. Oh, only after um five hundred Monte Carlo stuff. Right. That's what I was saying. We should have made it after two hundred rather than five hundred. Yeah. But uh, but there we go. We're not at five hundred. Oh, Great. it's coming. Oh, let's see. Okay. Yes. Okay. And they all switch. Okay. So they all switch to. Uh, they all switch. What are the colors? No, I don't remember the color. I hope that um, yellow is quiescent. Red is necrotic, but oh. let me make sure of that. Yep. No. Yellow is uh, proliferating. Quiescent is blue. Okay. So we have no quiescent cells. Mm -hmm. So so uh, we should we'd have to adjust our levels now, so that we get the level that the the rings that we want. Mm -hmm. So for this particular simulation, for the values that you chose, mm -hmm. uh, you'd have to come. You'd have to adjust the levels to make the so that you get that those those three ranks that you mm -hmm. want. Uh, was anybody else able to get that to work? Okay, well, we've we've run over by a little bit in terms of our of our of our um, break. So why don't we take a a ten minute break, and we'll come back and, and continue at seven o'clock. And if you've if you've got it working, that's great. If not, uh, please download the set nine point one point four uh, so that we can continue from there. I'll put the 9.1.4 in the chat and if you've gotten ahead of yourself then you could try doing what emma was trying to do which is changing the oxygen uptake levels for the different cell types and you'll find that after you do that again you'll have to change the thresholds using the thresholds to change the cell type is actually a little bit tricky and so it's very commonly done in this kind of simulation but it's actually tricky to make it work and that's what we're, we're exploring here Okay. All right. Were people able to get this to work with the type switching? What did you find? Anybody want to show what they got? We saw in Emma's case, you had proliferating and, and necrotic cells and no quiescent cells. So in that case, you have to adjust the levels till you get uh, the three layers. Was anybody able to get that to work? Pedro, what about you? Or William? Uh, yeah. yeah, I think so. Okay, why don't we take a look? Uh, I think I just used the uh, power from Oh, okay. So I start with all proliferating cells because there there's no more reason to to start uh with layers. Okay. And as yeah, 
eventually they Okay, what are the thresholds you used? so because my because my configuration is not exactly the same Mm -hmm. i set total amount total amount less than 3.4 to switch to necrotic uh less than four to switch to quiescent and more than four proliferating you can only switch to necrotic if you are quiescent and necrotic cells can't switch to anything perfect okay great william what about you do you want to show us what you got Well, sorry, William, did you want to use, you were going to show us as well. So this is, this is the demo code. So this has the, this has the counts of how many cells of each type you have, which are useful. So let's see what it happens when you run it. Okay. So in this case, you have a lot of proliferating cells and not very many necrotic and, and quiescent cells. What would happen if you changed the threshold so that uh, you you would you how if you wanted to have fewer proliferating cells and more quiescent cells, what would you have to do to the thresholds? How would you adjust the thresholds? If I make the threshold for conversion from proliferating to quiescent higher, will I have more or less proliferating cells? William? You're muted, I think. William, you're muted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, can you rephrase it? Because, like, what do you mean by? If you I think make, it will be. If you mm -hmm. make the threshold for convert, converting from proliferating to quiescent higher, okay. will you have more proliferating cells or more quiescent cells? Uh, More quiescent cells. Could less cell. Okay, why don't you try that and see what happens? You mean where do you change the type from proliferating to quiescent? Here. Where does the type change? The type. Uh that's the one problem about using somebody else's code. You have to Yeah, I reread it. Yeah, because I I think it's Over here, when you change about the cells, right? where does it change the type? Over over wait, wait, wait. over here. Yeah. Look at line fifty, fifty one, fifty two. Yeah, it's like here, <clears throat> here, and here, right? right. So here, the self.quiescence threshold is the threshold. Mm -hmm. So you try making the number of making self.quiescence threshold. You'll have to find where that is. It's somewhere at the top. Uh, make that bigger, a little bit bigger. So why don't you multiply that by 1.1, maybe? And. Um, Let's see, just change that one. And your prediction is that you should have fewer proliferating cells and more quiescent cells. So why mm -hmm. don't you run it and see whether your prediction is true? Okay. Uh... So don't, 
don't don't all you have to do is hit stop and start and play again okay you save the simulation We should probably have written down how many we had before. So uh, we got twelve, or before. Well, but I think it's pretty clear already that it's it's that we have fewer proliferating cells and more quiescent cells than before. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why don't we try multiplying by one point two? One point two. One. Let's see. You have to hit save there and then stop and restart. See if that. Yeah. So there, you definitely are getting more quiescence. Mm -hmm. So, so, so now you can adjust. You can adjust your simulation uh, to get the levels of of the rings that you want. Okay. Yeah. It's just like. Uh... Okay. Does anybody else was anybody else able to Jonathan, did that work for you? Uh I ended up using the provided code and yeah, I ended up with the concentric rings kind of circling around. But even even with the code that's provided, you may have to adjust the thresholds. So the point of this the point of this little exercise is to say start with that code that I get that you have, the provided code. And now uh, adjust the thresholds a little bit. You've got three thresholds. The threshold to go from proliferating to quiescent, the threshold to go back from quiescent to proliferating, and the threshold to go from quiescent to necrotic. And as mm -hmm. you move those thresholds, if you make the threshold higher, you're going to get more of the, of the cell type. Yeah. So... Um, you might want to adjust the, those thresholds and see what happens. Just try mm -hmm. try that a little bit. So I used a proliferating to quiescent threshold of seven times three point three quarters, and quiescent to proliferating threshold of seven. But you may want to use something else. So let's uh, let's keep going here. Um, so far, our cells have changed type, but they have not they have not they have not done anything else. In reality, they're called proliferating cells because they grow and divide. They're called quiescent cells because they're not dividing, but they stay alive. And the necrotic cells actually shrink and disappear. And so now what we want to do is we want to um, include the growth of the cells. Uh, the only ones that are going to grow are the proliferating cells. And we have to think a little bit about how growth works. And so the basic idea, and this is really not so much true for oxygen, it's more true for glucose, uh, but we're using oxygen as a surrogate for all of the limitations in the cell, is that the cell has what's called a resting metabolism. The cell has certain housekeeping functions that it needs to survive. Now, the nice thing about your car is that when your car is turned off, it doesn't use gasoline. But your cells, with certain very limited exceptions, uh, can't turn themselves off. They have to continually be operating their uh, mitochondrial machinery uh, to keep the cell alive. They have to continually maintain the cell particularly the pumps that pump water out of the cell have to operate all the time. There's a DNA repair that needs to go on all the time. There's a certain amount of protein synthesis that needs to happen all the time. 
And <clears throat> that basic consumption of, of nutrient uh, is called resting metabolism. So if the, there is an available amount of material to the cell, we have to ask the question, what is the growth rate of the cell? Um, and suppose that under ideal growth conditions, the cell grows at a rate of G in voxels per Monte Carlo step. And to determine what that G is, we have to ask the question, what's the cell cycle time? In other words, do we want the cells to, to divide every 10 Monte Carlo steps, every 100 Monte Carlo steps, every 1,000 Monte Carlo steps? Well, if our simulations take a long time to run, we don't want them dividing every 1,000 Monte Carlo steps. That's probably too slow. Uh, dividing every 10 Monte Carlo steps is going to be way too fast. And so let's suppose that the cells double in volume over 100 Monte Carlo steps. So we have to ask the question, how big were our cells? Where our cells were, I think we said eight by eight initially. So we want to grow 64, mon 64 voxels in 100 Monte Carlo steps. So that means the growth rate would be 0.6 Uh, that would be the fastest we could grow. So in that case, at each time step, our V target would be V target plus the growth rate, 0.6. Um, if the available oxygen is uptake amount minus the resting metabolism, can't be less, well, it can be less than zero, but that's when our cells die. Um, then we have to have the growth rate, which is G, the maximum rate, times some function, which is zero if the extra amount of oxygen is low and goes to one when it's high. That's called the Michaelis function. And so if we write F of the uptake is the uptake amount divided by a scale factor plus the uptake amount, then that's a number always between zero and one. And then we have to decide what that scale factor is. That scale factor should in fact be that crossover that we just calculated between quiescent and proliferating cells. Okay, does that, does that make sense so far? Okay. So now, I want you to do, go in and I want you to unfreeze your cells. And when you unfreeze your cells, you're going to have to give them a target volume, a lambda volume, because otherwise they're going to just shrink and disappear. You're going to have to give a contact energy because otherwise they're going to fuzz out. And then when you have your uptake amount, for your proliferating cells, you're going to say S is equal to the max of zero uptake amount minus metabolic amount. You have to decide what metabolic amount is. And then V target will equal V target plus G, that 64 divided by 100, times S over S scale plus S. And my advice is set metabolism to five and scale to seven. And don't turn on growth or type transitions until uh, field concentrations have equilibrated, maybe 200 Monte Carlo steps. <clears throat> and so try adding that to your simulation. So what do you have to do? You have to unfreeze the cells. You have to give them a target volume and lambda volume. And that has to be done in Python. So you'll need the volume plug-in you'll have to de define the lambda volume and target volume in Python. Then at each time you set S equal to max, zero comma uptake amount minus metabolism. Growth rate is G times S over S scale plus S. Okay. And then you would have the cells divide 
you'd have the cells to here i haven't don't have division yet um uh, sorry i do i actually i do have to let's see did i put division in the simulation or not okay no yes i did so then oh sorry no i said not to here so don't have the cells divide for this step so the cells will grow but not divide makes it a little bit easier to start with. Okay. And again, the if you get stuck, the code is available. But these are things that it's important to practice. Uh, in part, practice how to set the target volume lambda volume for each cell. Uh, remember how to add the contact energy if you didn't have it already. And uh, also how to do cell growth. So why don't people try that out? Um, I'm confused about the cell type names. Okay. Um, so can I use those um, uppercase cell type names without doing something special beyond just starting the simulation with that cell type that's so 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 basically self dot quies mm -hmm. or quiescent or necrotic is just the number one two three okay the, okay the, the the reason you might want to use a symbolic one is that we typically uh -huh. think of the type by the name mm -hmm. and so uh if you see in the simulation if type equals six you have mm -hmm. to remember what that means but so those names self dot type name. Yes. Can I get that immediately after just initializing the simulation with cells of named types? Yes. The, okay. The, they're instantiated by the XML. Okay. The type names are instantiated by the XML. So okay. you don't have to have created any cells of a given type to access that in, in the Python to access the self dot type name. Um, I have something, it's running, but the cells look really bad. Do I need to put in um, target let's surface? Take, let's take a look. So I also have, where did they go? These. Okay. So it looks to me like what's happening is you don't have a contact energy. See, I so, did put in contact energy, but I just set them all to 10. So let's look in the in the XML. Mm -hmm. Um So that should be that should be okay. I'm not sure why the me. I'm actually puzzled by that. I would think that the mm -hmm. that the um, that should work. Okay. I'm not yeah, sure why the. Bad. I'm not sure why the boundaries are messed up there. Oh, uh, well. It's odd that none of these lists had. Okay. Anyways. We probably have no no instances of that cell type is what the problem is. That's why it's throwing the air. I saw all three. I mean, well, here. Let's, let's run it again and let's let's look at it together. No, that's only right. one thing. No, that, that looks good. Yeah, that indicated that I had all three cell types, so that was. Oh, a that looks fine. So where is the error being thrown? Um, it's in this mean function. So I'm trying to find the mean oxygen concentration inside ah, the cells. Of each ah. type. So let's so see here, let's see what you did. So you created a list of the I mean I would prefer to just get the list of all cells of that type and do a list comprehension, but when I wrote this I didn't know how to do that. So I did it in this that's annoying fine. way. So you go through the cells all the cells. Uh-huh. And then um Necrotic oxygen concentration. You append the value. Mm -hmm. okay. 
And now... Oh, uh, this should be outside of the for loop. I think that's it. Yep. Huh. Okay. I need to think about that because I'm using that for loop for way too many things at once. Okay. Okay. Anybody else have something? Jonathan, did that work for you? Uh, yes. Okay. Let's do you do. want to show us what you got? Yeah, one second. Um, I just have to change. I realize that this is a lot to do in this class because we're putting together all of the things we've done in all of the previous classes. And so we're using all of the things that we did before. And and until you got you're comfortable with all of the steps, going through it, uh, all of them together is a lot. But I think it's important to to try to practice this kind of uh, this kind of exercise. Uh, as when when you're building models, this is how you build build models in practice. Okay. Oh. Does it not like? Was it not like on screen sharing? I guess I could just do screen. Oh. Yeah. Well, everything changed, but I think it's good. Is it sharing? Yep. Sharing. Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not with this. I don't need this. Okay, it should be going. So the cell types are changing. They're not frozen. Mm -hmm. No. Uh, okay. And now. And it should reach. It should eventually reach like a state of equilibrium, right? Where like it has a casing almost. Right. Well, so this is now stabilized in terms of the cell types. And then at some point we should be turning on cell growth so that the Proliferating cells should start growing. Okay. I think in the default, it was set to 500. The time was set to 500 when that happened. So I didn't change any values of that. So it should start doing half. Well, let's look at the code and see whether the growth is in there. If it isn't, we can put it in. Okay, so this would be in the Python. So now we say, okay, you start the initial target volume, so that's fine. So now let's scroll down. And let's see whether we have the cell growth or not. Um, So the, none of this is doing cell growth. So let's see. Mm. So it looks like this doesn't have the cell growth in it yet. This has got the cells unfrozen, but it doesn't have the cells growing. No. So what we have to do now is let's come back. Let's come back to uh, what I what I suggested. So the first thing we have to do is. For the proliferating, yeah. So let's just say that the 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 the, 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 the proliferating cells grow at a rate of sixty four divided by a hundred. So if I'm of type proliferating, which would be here in law after line third, uh, it's line. What is it? I can't read it. Fifty seven, I think. Uh, here. So proliferating. Actually, we probably don't want to do that when we're changing the cell type. Yeah. So we probably want to write another loop, uh, which could be there. Um, so if this for cell and self dot cell list by type proliferating, 
you could grab the line from 57, I 55. Oh, whatever. just do this entirely. Yeah. And now we want to just, the first thing we'll do is just have it grow at a constant rate. So cell.target volume. Yeah, plus equals 64 divided by 100. And and we can walk through this step by step to build it up. So let's let's save that and run that. Save that. Let's start running. Oh. Um forgot to sort volume. Cell G object is um it should be it's it's target. Um Oh wait, I did target. Sorry, target volume. Yeah. This should fix it, right? Yeah, you know, the camel case. It should both. Both of those should work, but I guess. I guess. Uh, okay. Yes, that's that's right. It likes that one more. <laughs> okay, so they're growing. Okay, so. Now what we didn't do was we didn't wait wait we didn't wait on the trigger. Um, so let's go back and put an if MCS greater than um, if MCS greater than two hundred is fine probably. Okay. You need a colon after the if, and then an indent. Uh, wait. Repeat. Sorry. If after after the if you need a colon. Oh, or Python. No, no. After the statement, the whole at the end of the line. Oh, it's, it's yeah. Python. And mm -hmm. then you have to indent the the line seventy. There you go. Right. Okay. okay go. Yeah. Now let's run that. So the cell types are messed up, but they'll fix themselves. Okay, they fix themselves. And now, pretty soon, we should see the growth start. Okay, so now you see the cells grow. Yeah, we're starting to get some. Right. So now, now the next step is let's go back to that. Let's go back to the lines where we have um, there, and instead of doing that, let's calculate that S. S is going to be max of uptake zero comma uptake amount, which you have stored in the dictionary. Here it's called oxygen available, not uptake amount. So. You're going to want cell dot dict oxygen available. Uh -uh. You're going to set cell dot so you can copy, you can cut and paste that if you want. What you want is what you want is this s equals max of zero point zero comma cell dot dict of Oxygen available. Yeah. So you want I put it in the chat. What you want. The only problem here is we should have screenshotted the exercise because I can't show you the exercise assignment at the and the okay. So what you want is S. The amount of oxygen available on the left hand side, S equals right. And now you need your cell dot dict. And I don't I didn't type it all out for you. Is equal to the maximum of zero, comma, cell dict oxygen available. And you have to put the quotation marks in. Okay, minus metabolism. And you have to define the value of metabolism. 
So in metabolism. This case. In this case, I suggested that you use a value of metabolism of five. All right. Just for general energy expenditure. Oh, that's right. And now we need to do one more step, which is to set the growth rate. And we'll say growth equals, and now we want S divided by S plus, and I said use seven, so that. Oh, did not get it here. And I've got a tight, I've got a capital instead of a lowercase for one of those S's, I think. Okay. And now you need to move line 70 down and multiply after make after lines 70 you know, below growth and multiply the 64 divided by 100 times growth. All right. Now that should, so no, you've got to move the growth, the tar, you've got them out of order. And then this needs to go up. Yes. Is there any, any problem? Yeah, I that's it, not in the right order. You have to yeah, calculate yeah. S first and then the growth S rate. And then, yeah. S so, calculation, growth calculation, and the implementation of growth. Now, now that'll, that should work. Okay. And now, wait for it to get to 200. Right. And now we should see that the cells will grow at a rate. You're not going to see a big difference, but, but there'll be some difference. Mm -hmm. That the cells will grow a little slower, and if they run out of oxygen, they'll stop growing. Okay. You'll notice that the that the, that that layer of proliferating cells, the thickness of the layer will stay about constant, and because as the thing grows, you'll get more quiescent cells inside. So actually, the number of proliferating cells will keep going down slowly. Now you're going to run into the edge of the simulation, which so that's going to be a problem. Really, we should have done a bigger simulation. Okay, good. Perfect. So let me come back. Thank you. Let me come back. We're not going to have time to finish this exercise tonight because we're going to run out of time in a minute. But let me just walk you through the, the next step. So you should see something that looks like this, which is what you got. And we can change the threshold for conversion from quiescent to necrotic, um, play with those games, which I probably will ask you to do in the homework assignment uh, since we didn't get to do it in class today so much. And then um, why not? Well, so, so now before the other thing we are gonna have to do pretty soon, um, is and actually this is has to be done before before this one really um is include cell division so it's missing in this slide so you have to turn on cell division so that probably is something that would take a little bit more time than we have for tonight uh why don't people try that quickly let's see if you can get that to work Let's let's make sure. Does every who does does everybody have things up to the this point? So do you have the cells growing? Do people have the cells growing? Does anybody need help getting the cells to grow? I still have that strange problem with the contact energy. Okay, let's take a look. Let's see if we can debug Emma's Emma's code for the last thing for tonight. Um, this is what I'm getting now with the type switching and the growth. And I see that uh, the proliferating cells are indeed growing, but we have no more quiescent cells except from like here on the edges. And then 
um, these are awfully shaped. Well, and we also have the cell counts by type are going down, which doesn't make uh -huh. sense. Well, maybe I made the initial target volume too much or something. No, it's not that. It's it's in the XML. I bet I bet we did something silly like we put the XML into a comment by mistake. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Plug in contact. That looks reasonable. Um, why would this be strange? Um, this is the right syntax here yeah that looks okay to me is there something anyone see a bizarre syntax error let me look at my code and see what I mean. Uh, do we are we sure we have the type names right? Let's yes. But do I need to put in? Maybe I need to put in some sort of um, plugin for the the Python code to to link them together. No. What um, adhesion? Uh, okay. Um, flex. You just need the contact energy. Which okay. Is maybe it's this mysterious indentation. Maybe that was it. It's just the indentation doesn't case. matter in XML. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, in Python it does. Are okay. we sure we're running this simulation? Um, we're running a vascular tumor. This is a vascular tumor dot XML. All right. I can let me just to be absolutely sure, close this, reopen that. Okay. Yeah, here this, we go. This, this has to be something this has to be something. Silly. Let's see. Yeah. Um, well, let me compare well, it to. I, I know what it is. I know what it is. It's the same thing we did in the first class for the second class. You don't have the volume constraint plugin loaded. I have to load that here, or just in, in the Python. Loaded in the XML. Okay, so yeah, that was what I was wondering. I don't even know how to. Like just like this. It. And then I delete oh, all of it. The center of it, yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. That's what was missing. Yeah, I thought there was something like that. Do you have contact energies between the same cells as well? Well, there's always a contact energy. Oh, no, I didn't do it. There has to be a contact energy. See, that's another reason. Okay, so what happened when you when you changed them? You should not have the cells disappearing now, at least. That looks better, huh? I still don't quite understand why the contact energy between necrotic and necrotic is. Because we don't, don't have necrotic and necrotic. Yeah, I'm so hungry. <laughs> I noticed that I can't do anything that involves detail if I get past a certain hunger level. Yeah, well, we're late. It's a late evening. Um, one thing you can do is you can use the the the, the XML generator. Mm -hmm. um, if you plug in the contact energy plugin, it will generate all of the permutations for you. Okay. If you have four cell types, it'll generate all the permutations. So then you don't have to do it. I don't have to remember. Okay, yeah. but that's, that's working now. Okay. So the problem was that the volume plugin wasn't on it, mm -hmm. and the contact energies were missing. Some of them were missing, but that, but, but the, but, but the thing that was the reason it looked so strange was because of volumes. Yeah. All right. Well, thank everybody for for um, for um, all the all the the work uh, together. I, I really appreciate it when people screen share and share their problems. Um, I know it's not always easy to do that, but I think uh, 
if you're having a problem, probably other people are having the same problem. So it's better to look at it together. And uh, I'll look forward to, to uh, keep working on this with you next week. Thanks, everybody. Good night.